Sean Hook's Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. Do you believe we are being visited here on Earth? According to a Gallup poll, four in 10 Americans now think some UFOs that people have spotted have been alien spacecraft visiting Earth from other planets or galaxies. This is up from a third saying so two years ago. This number of believers has climbed because for the first time the government is admitting this stuff and actually expressing concern over what they're seeing. Sightings of crafts that simply can't be explained by our current understanding of physics. Now this presents two problems. Either our adversaries, namely China, have developed superior technology, or this stuff is otherworldly. Either way, the choices are, at the very least, troubling. Let's listen in to what Fox explored recently on this subject. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. Military pilots have reported bizarre aircraft popping up around sensitive national security sites, and so have commercial pilots. We just had something go right over the top of us. Intelligence leaders in Congress like Senator Marco Rubio are growing increasingly concerned. We don't know who they are. We don't know what it is. It isn't ours. But if there's a thing. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson interviewed some of the military pilots who tracked them and then lost them. Uh, they followed it, and then suddenly it would move. Uh, in a direction uh, uh, faster than anything that they had ever seen. The sightings picked up during the Obama administration. We can't explain how they moved, their trajectory. And then they picked up more through the Trump administration. Movements that, uh, that are hard to replicate, that we don't have the technology for. And Trump's director of national intelligence suggested it's picked up more than the public's been told. There are a lot more sightings than have been made public. The Pentagon ordered the Navy to investigate, but as government leaders examined emerging classified intelligence, the Biden administration escalated the investigation by forming a new dedicated unit. While we don't know what they know, we do know they've been concerned this could be the work of an adversary like China or Russia. And with the sightings of our national security facilities, it raised concerns this summer that they could be spying on us. Maybe it's a foreign adversary who's made a technological leap. Oh my gosh. Sometimes we wonder whether or not our adversaries have technologies um, that are a little bit further down the road than we thought or that we realized. There's something there. We just don't know what it is. Do you think it could possibly be Russia or another foreign adversary? That's why we need to find out. Because if there is an adversary with that kind of technology, then uh, we definitely need to be very, very careful. But over the past few weeks, lawmakers with access to intelligence have publicly moved away from that theory. Well, I don't believe they're coming from foreign adversaries. And, uh, and frankly, China and Russia just aren't there. To something maybe out of this world. If for some reason these came from another uh, uh, system, if you will, another alien society, that would make me uh, um, more fascinated, not fearful. Including NASA Administrator Nelson in this interview with the University of Virginia. Who am I to say that planet Earth is the only location of a life form that is civilized? Craig Patrick, Fox News. Do you believe what you just heard? I mean, that is strong language from politicians. Joining me now is Jeremy Corbell, a UFO expert who's been doing a deep dive into this subject for some 20 years. Jeremy, great to see you again. Good to see you again. Okay, we've got guys like Bill Nelson and we've got Obama. We've got all kinds of people now saying, hey, we don't know what this stuff is. If you just step back for a minute and go, wow, that, I mean, that is an unbelievable statement. That's right. You know, people can believe in UFOs, but UFOs are no longer a matter of belief. You have now been told by your representative government a lot of details about how we study UFOs, that our military funded these studies, and that it's an ongoing phenomenon with an increased frequency that represents craft of unknown origin that are far more advanced. These craft they, they infiltrate, for lack of a better word, into our restricted airspace. They fly with impunity. And this is a national security issue for some people. And for me, it's a, it's a much bigger existential issue. You know, who are operating these craft? Who made them? Where are they from? What is the intent of those who pilot these? You know, the minute you dive into this, people think you're a kook. You start going into this, but more and more, there are 
so called credible people saying this is real. We don't know what it is and we're concerned. Are you concerned about what it is or are you more taking a position that if they were threatening, they would have already obliterated us? Well, you know, two things about that. One is that the stigma is dissolving. It's fading because of fact, because of science fact. We now have data, radar, visual. We have optics that track these things, radar systems. These, this is not fiction. It's not fantasy. The entire stigma is now dissolving when it comes to talking about these unknown objects, these machines that fly with impunity in our restricted airspace. I mean, this is a real issue. And now finally, people are, are talking about it. As far as the question of concern, look, UFOs have been part of the human experience from as far back as we can see in recorded human history. If there was a nefarious intent, you figure that we would know by now. You know, but the, the issue here is that Anybody that's looking at this, such as our military, it is their job, it is their duty to protect the American public. So there is this sense of national security, there is this sense of assessing the threat and the potential. Whoever operates these craft, these craft are so far advanced that that's why you hear officials saying, look, we're pretty much ruling out that these are adversarial nations because people just aren't there yet. The technology we witness, the, with the performances we see, it doesn't represent a technology and a physics that we have yet grasped as humanity on planet Earth. So the UFO presence on planet Earth, it's as real as the nose on your face. Now, finally, we're being able to look at it without stigma. Jeremy, this is a Tic Tac video, the famous Tic Tac video. You reported on it before anyone else, but this is the one that kind of got the ball rolling. And this craft yeah, that first does video. some really weird stuff. Yeah, the first video you're showing, right, that is the Tic Tac UFO. You're also showing the Gimbal UFO from the East Coast in 2015. The Tic Tac was in 2004. And then you're showing one called the Go Fast. All three of these have been confirmed by the Pentagon as being unidentified aerial phenomenon, UAPs or UFOs. The flight characteristics of these craft are so astonishing. The pilot that chased the Tic Tac UFO, the uh, commander who filmed the Tic Tac UFO, they came forward to me and they detailed what they saw, what they experienced, what they encountered. What they encountered was a vehicle that was able to defy our known physics, its ability to move, to shoot off, to move at a 90 degree turn at unimaginable speeds. These Tic Tacs, by the way, there were multiple, many of them. They were descending from above 80,000 feet, which is the height we know because that's the scan volume of the SPY-1 radar, down to sea level in less than a second and a half, oh like that. God. Wow. No sonic booms. How does this happen? Do you, do you uh, what's the working theory? There's some kind of gravitational thing going on, right? Isn't that the, the, you, the working theory? You nailed it. So there were all these reports that recently came out through FOIA. There were actually 38 of these reports. And 37 of those reports were about things like the propulsion system. It is theorized that these craft propel, for lack of a better word, through manipulating gravity. In fact, amplifying what they call gravity waves. So if this is true, if these craft are literally bending space and time through harnessing the mysterious force that we know as gravity, then we're talking about a technology that's not a hundred years, it's not a thousand years ahead of us. We're talking hundreds of thousands of years ahead of what we have here that we consider flight wow. on Earth. Unbelievable, all right. Now, you've got this OSAP. This is a secretly funded government UFO program. They got 22 million to go do a deep dive into this, the Advanced Aerospace Weapon System Applications Program. This is the documents you're talking of. What, what are we learning from that? They, we're taking this deadly seriously, right? Correct, so what we learned there was that our government 
We funded taxpayer money funded for $22 million. It was misreported by the, by the New York Times, but let's clarify it now. That program was called OSAP, as you said, Advanced Aerospace Weapon System Applications Program. That program generated over 200 papers. They had over 50 employees. It's the largest UFO study in history that we know of by our government. They also built the largest database of sightings and encounters to help move this information forward. They, it, we're seeing a very small part of that. We're seeing, they're called DIRDs, Defense Intelligence Reference Documents. These are an unclassified, acts, um, unclassified aspect of these larger classified studies. In these reports, one of them has made a lot of headlines, made a lot of news, because it deals with the biological impacts of close encounters with UFOs. However, there were 37 more that talk about gravity propulsion, talk about aerospace, the future of our technology as we exploit and try to reverse engineer these materials and machinery that it appears we have recovered. So these documents give us a window. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We've recovered some stuff that we are looking at, like materials, metals from these craft? That is 100% confirmed, and that wow. is also admitted to that we have alloys associated with the UFO phenomenon. I, I happen to know, and it more will be revealed about that, that we have much more than just materials. We're talking machinery, if not whole craft. So look, if this is true, and you don't need to take my word for it, just listen to, talk to your government, ask questions to your government. We are exploiting and reverse engineering, at minimum, alloys and materials associated with UFOs, but also machinery, which has been admitted. So there are programs that are there now that are not yet public, but the one that is public, they also talk about that. Jeremy, is there any chance that this is some kind of deep fake, that we are way ahead, I'm talking about the United States, way ahead of everybody, and we're this is a great misdirection saying this is otherworldly, but it's actually our stuff. I, I wish that were true, John. I, I really, I, my heart sunk the day that I absolutely confirmed that is not the case. There is a protocol for black projects. We don't typically use our black project technologies against our own military, which is precisely what happened when out in 2019 on, on the West Coast, when there were swarms of UFOs that were around 10 of our, our warships, we were not using our own technology. This was from somewhere else. This was admitted by the top of the Navy. It was admitted at every part of the hierarchy of government that we don't know whose these were. And now we can pretty much rule out that it was China or Russia or another technologically advanced nation. So no, these are not ours. There are protocols for when pilots engage uh, a black project of ours. They, they are debriefed and they are told not to talk about it. They have to sign NDAs. None of that happened, for example, in the case of the Tic Tac UFOs or the case of the 2019 swarms over 10 of our Navy warships. John, this is this is not ours. And that is is haunting. Our goal is to try to get a technological advantage. That's part of the reason why there's secrecy about UFOs. Obviously, our government is studying this stuff in depth and scientifically. But we've got to believe so, then, we've got to believe China and other nations are as well, because this isn't only happening yeah. in the US. This stuff is happening all over the world, right? China has admitted not only are they studying UFOs, but in a public announcement, they said that they're using artificial intelligence to help sort those encounters. So they are, if not as we are, as interested, but they might be even further along. And that is one of the fears of the United States, that Russia or China is further along in the studying of these materials. Oh, my goodness. So we're in another arms race here. <laughs> it is. It is. It's a secret arms race because of the uh, sensitivity to it. It was said back in the 50s that the UFO phenomenon is classified higher than the nuclear weapons programs within the United States. This is something that uh, has been always held close through special access programs, through special access protection because of the sensitivity. These technologies are not just about energy and transportation. These technologies can be weaponized. Uh, Jeremy, one more thing before we let you go. 
the people who have come into contact with this stuff. You talked about that they are experiencing uh, injuries from encounters with these anomalous vehicles. What are we talking about? What kinds of injuries are people or dis discomfort are they experiencing? Right, so these are highly documented by the OSAP program. There are all sorts of radiation damage on a cellular and DNA level to people. We're talking radiation burns, but there's more exotic types of harmful effects people have experienced from being in close proximity, as they say, to a UAP or to a UFO. So OSAP studied specifically, like Boots on the Ground studied, 42 cases where they documented that humans suffered injuries from these alleged encounters with anomalous vehicles. So I, I will say, though, that this does not look like an overt hostility much more likely there's some sort of interaction that is going on with the propulsion systems themselves. This does not seem like an act of war. It does not seem like a, a directed harmful experience in most of the cases. However, there are some that, that, that do convey that. So I think it's an interaction with the propulsion system. That's what our government also thinks. We now know UFOs are real. The big question is who operates them? How do they work? Where do they come from? And what's the intent? And I'm as eager as you to find out. It's exciting and uncharted territory. It's, it's the greatest mystery we could ever report on. It's fascinating stuff. We're back in the second half of the program with Jeremy Corbell, UFO expert on Newsmaker Saturday. Back on Newsmaker Saturday, it is probably the greatest mystery out there. Are we alone? Have we been visited? It sounds like crazy talk, but it's not crazy anymore for the U.S. government. They're taking it deathly seriously because craft have been identified, videotaped, tracked by our military that no one can explain with the current knowledge of physics. UFO expert Jeremy Corbell joins us again for the second half of the program. Jeremy, uh, we talked in the first part about how the government has recovered. You believe, you've seen documents, that we have recovered materials of these vehicles that have crashed? Yeah, so this is actually well documented. You don't have to take my word on it. This was actually in the congressional language when they were trying to get our intelligence agencies to fess up about what they've been studying. They said, if we've been exploiting or reverse engineering, we want to know about it. So indeed, this is true. And one of the most haunting statements that was made by the heads of this uh, DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency UFO program, was that after their program, it was uh, the Department of Homeland Security officials that looked at the information and they were convinced that this advanced technology was sequestered at aerospace contractors facilities and that this is the biggest secret ever kept by the United States, is, is private industry being used to obfuscate the, the ability to look at this stuff through freedom of information and that they're exploiting these technologies under government you know, oversight, but within the private aerospace sectors. Companies like Lockheed Martin that, that Harry Reid speculated, Senator Reid speculated, was one of the places we had some of these technologies. It's an, it's an esoteric question, but I, I'm going to ask it. Um, you know, we're right in the middle of this Russia-Ukraine business, more kind of uh, traditional warfare going on. Is this, is this something where... China, Russia, U.S. Um, would start to collaborate to try to figure out what's going on if we think there may be a threat otherworldly? Right. So this is a very interesting question because there was at times collaboration between governments to look at these materials. And we learned more about the United States UFO programs from Russian classified documents that actually George Knapp smuggled back to the United States after Glasnost and Perestroika during that time period. And we learned and we read in there that at one time we were working together, but as breakthroughs occurred in the material science aspect, we shut out other countries. So here's the deal. You'd, you'd like to think that humanity would come together and would work on the UFO problem in unison. But in fact, everybody is kind of jockeying for a technological advantage to protect their own nation and to get an upper hand. 
So right now, we do not, from my understanding, have any coordination between major nations. It is, in fact, a type of secret Cold War. Yeah, I mean, this would be the ultimate kumbaya moment to, keep, to bring the world together. If, if we thought there was something else out there that was truly an existential threat, potentially, that, that you is, know, it would bring nations together because they'd have no other choice. Well, the, you know, this is something that President Reagan said at the U.N. in a very famous speech that, you know, imagine if we had a threat not from Earth, how quickly it would bond humanity together as one. The, the reality is that, and you can see this, unfortunately, human beings are still very primitive. They're very primitive psychologically. We are very primitive from a technological standpoint. It's just been in the last 150 years that we've really advanced to any degree technologically. Before that, human beings were doing the same thing over and over and over. So the kind of savage nature of, of humanity is that we are all looking for a, a leg up when it comes to combat and warfare. It has not brought us together other than yeah. through our curiosity. Well, you think of the of the leap from the Wright brothers to flying to the moon. It's an incredible thing in, in you know, 65, 70 years. It's unbelievable. All right, Jeremy, do, do, do the U.S. Defense Department officials believe that these pose a hostile intent? And does anybody even speculate why they might be probing uh, civilization on this planet that's really, if, if this stuff is real, that's really in the dark ages? What, what would be the point? Right. I, I mean, so, so first of all, the, the idea that we have to assess the level of threat to these unknowns, that's just a military perspective. That is a duty of our military. So absolutely, this is considered a national security uh, threat because we don't know the intent, we don't know the capability, and we don't know the opportunity. So that's, that's the kind of the triangle of defense that we're supposed to look at. So at this point, it is very fair to say that this is considered a national security threat. That doesn't mean that it is. However, UFOs have regularly displayed the ability to turn on or off our nuclear weapons. And this is something that is well documented and public information. There's a very famous case from Maelstrom Air Force Base where a saucer type craft comes over the base and turns on and off the nuclear weapons. So the ability to show that overt act of power is something that is taken very seriously by our government and other governments in the world where this has happened. So, so that's the, the first aspect to what you asked, and I forgot the second Yeah, question okay, now, now, this is the, now we're getting into the twilight zone, but I've got to ask it. If we've had craft actually go down where we've recovered materials, as you've said, these are unmanned. Un, there's no life on board. Well, that's not consistent with the reports. Some of the reports are that these are, you know, drones of some sort, that there aren't occupants piloting them directly, that maybe they're piloted through an AI. But the majority of reports is that these are piloted craft. Well, what? Who's on board? <laughs> People, John, people from somewhere else. And when I say somewhere oh else, God. I mean somewhere else. Well, we don't know where they're from. Have they been here all along and just had a breakaway civilization that somehow, you know, they've been here before us? Or it looks like from the way the craft propel, likely they're from much farther away from that. I've but there are leave also it. wild theories. I've got to leave it there. Uh, well, that'll leave people hanging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Corbell. <laughs> Boy, we've touched the third rail. Thank you for being with us on News. We, we have Saturday. touched the third rail, but here's the deal, John. Everybody should look at this and determine for themselves, this is real, it's happening. You're either aware of it or you're not. You've been told UFOs are real. So now what's up? Yeah, okay, I got it loud and clear. I, hey, look, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not one to say, forget it, it's crazy. Who knows? We're back in a minute on Newsmaker Saturday. Thanks, as always, for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. QR code on the screen for prior shows or fox10phoenix.com slash newsmaker. We'll see you next week.